Welcome to Looking Behind the Mirror, where we explore narcissism in an attempt to take our lives back as we make sense out of nonsense. As a quick disclaimer, I am not a professional and everything I say is based on my opinions, based on my own research and my own personal experiences. If you are in crisis, please seek professional help. I will provide links below. In today's video, I am going to discuss blame shifting, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with if you have been involved with a narcissistic person. I'm going to break this video down into a few parts. First, I'm going to discuss briefly why narcissists blame shift. Then I'm going to go over a few ways that they do this so that you can recognize when it's happening. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about ways that you can handle this to minimize the way that it affects your life. And at the end of the video, I have an analogy that I came up with that helped me a lot when I was recovering from narcissistic abuse, and I hope that it can help you too. So first, why do narcissists blame shift? This can go pretty deep. I could probably go on for hours about this, but to put it as simply as possible, Narcissists think in black and white. They do what's called splitting. They see things as either all good or all bad, especially people. You're either 100% infallible, perfect, awesome, the best thing that's ever happened to the world, or you're a worthless piece of trash that doesn't deserve to breathe. <laughs> There's nothing in between. Narcissists view people this way, and they view themselves this way. Naturally, it's no fun to think of yourself as a complete piece of trash, right? Pathological narcissists are shame-based, and deep down, they really all believe that they are the scum of the earth. Absolutely worthless pieces of trash. I really can't do justice to the way they feel about themselves with words. They spend all of their time trying to cover this up and deny it. Most of them probably aren't even aware that they feel this way because their defense mechanisms are that effective. But it doesn't change the fact that they spend pretty much every waking minute trying to cover this awful feeling up. So. If they view themselves as either all good or all bad, there's no other choices. They have to be 100% perfect. If they make any mistakes or they show any signs of flaws or imperfections, automatically they're 100% bad. They are a piece of trash. They're a smashed bug on the bottom of your shoe. They don't deserve to live. They can't really handle feeling that way. It's too bad that they feel this way because it's really one of their biggest problems. Oh, and don't think that you can talk them out of this because most of them aren't even consciously aware that they feel this way and they are not going to listen to you. So this is why they blame shift. It's a knee jerk reaction. When they feel like they might be responsible for something, anything that they've done wrong, it feels life threatening to them. It is beyond terrifying for them to have to entertain the idea that maybe they're not perfect because maybe they don't even deserve to exist. Maybe everybody's going to see that they really are a completely worthless piece of trash that shouldn't be alive. They would rather die than face this. And that's why they blame everything on you or whoever, anyone but them, right? That's a quick explanation of why they can't accept blame for anything. So how do they do this? Oh my gosh, so many ways. <laughs> when you spend your whole life trying to defend yourself against toxic, fundamental, subconscious shame, you get pretty good at passing the blame off onto other people. Oh, and just to clarify, when they're blaming you or whoever for everything, it's not about you. Narcissism is never about you, it's about them. They're trying to convince themselves that it's your fault. If they could convince you that it's your fault, that's even better because if you're going to admit that it's your fault, well, obviously it must be your fault, which means it's not their fault. And that's why they work so hard to convince you of things that are nonsense because really they're trying to convince themselves. So I wrote down some phrases that might sound familiar to you. 
Imagine that you're confronting a narcissist and you're trying to get some clarity over something that maybe they did wrong. Maybe they messed something up. Oh, heaven forbid, right? So you're having this conversation and you become very confused because they will use one of these phrases on you, maybe. Well, I wouldn't have done that if you had just done this. So you think everything is my fault? Nothing is your fault. It's all my fault. You need to take accountability for the things that you've done wrong. How do you expect me to treat you when you don't listen? I'm sorry that you took things the wrong way. Do you really think that I'm the kind of person that would do something like that? I thought you knew me better than that. What would you have done if you had been in my position? Go on, tell me what your perfect solution is. I never thought that you were the kind of person that could sit here and insult me like this. How dare you, after all I've done for you. Yeah, you know, even when you know what's going on, some of these phrases can really still strike a nerve with you, right? So that takes me to the next part of this video is how do you handle this? You know, I know for me personally, one thing that really got me was this idea that um, some of it was my fault, that I needed to take responsibility for the things I did wrong, right? It takes two to tango, as they say. Um, what an extremely invalidating, insulting, insensitive, cruel thing to say to somebody who's been abused by someone else, right? But still, what answer is there to Oh, so you think everything is the other person's fault? I spent a lot of time going over this in my head and I came up with an analogy that really helped to clarify things with myself and helped me kind of explain how I felt about what had happened whilst not trying to say that I never did anything wrong, but that no, it really wasn't my fault. So here's the analogy. Let's say that you partner with someone to build a house together from the ground up, okay? I mean, you're gonna pour the foundation and put the framing up and everything. You're gonna build a house together and you're both really excited about this. And you go into it thinking that this is the house you're gonna live in for the rest of your life. You put a lot of thought and love into this. You have a lot of hope. You expect a lot of things for the future around this house and you really try your best to make this last to make it count to make it your dream home okay so the house goes up and through this process you make a few mistakes you put the doorknobs on backwards you put the towel holder upside down Maybe you used the wrong color of paint in the bathroom and then you ran out of that color and you had to finish it with the wrong color. So now all the colors are off. Maybe you used the wrong style of kitchen faucet so it doesn't match the rest of the fixtures in the house. Maybe the outlet covers don't match in one of the rooms and maybe you measured some of the baseboards the wrong length. So now in the living room, there's this corner where the baseboards don't quite meet and there's this gap that's been driving you crazy, okay? So you made these mistakes because you're not perfect. Now, if you're with a pathological narcissist who's been helping you build this home, what the narcissist has done is akin to pouring buckets of water behind the drywall, pouring concrete down the plumbing, taking a sledgehammer to the foundation, starting a fire in the attic, maybe dumping a box of termites under the crawl space, shoving a bunch of dead fish up the chimney, ripping the copper piping out, Okay, so eventually this house is no longer livable. This house that you had so much hope for, that you were so excited to build together, you're like, oh, we can't live here anymore. And the city comes and condemns it. And when it's all said and done, you're like, why did you do all that stuff? Why did you destroy our home? And the narcissist looks at you and says, me? You're the one that put the doorknobs on backwards and the towel holder upside down and used the wrong color paint in the bathroom. Everything's my fault, huh? You're just perfect, huh? You're the one that cut the baseboard the wrong length. I can't believe that you're trying to say that this is all my fault. I did my best. I'm sorry that you can't take accountability for what you've done. 
and I wouldn't have poured water down the walls if you had just gotten the color right in the bathroom. How did you expect me to act when you're the one that can't even put the doorknobs on the right way? I'm sorry if you don't know how to take care of a house. What would you have done differently? What would you have done differently if you had been in my shoes? What, you think I'm an expert at this? I never thought that you were the kind of person that could sit here and accuse me of these kind of things. How dare you? After all the time I spent building that home for you, after all the work I did, this is how you repay me. So I hope that illustration can kind of help the absurdity pop out at you because it did for me. It really helped bring clarity into a situation that feels like somebody stuck egg beaters into your brain and turned them on for years. Yeah, you're not perfect, but just because you're not perfect doesn't mean that you are the one that destroyed the relationship. There are relationship problems and there is abuse. Abuse is not a relationship problem. And if you're an abuse victim, you are not the one that caused the abuse. You're not to blame for the abuse and not being perfect is not the reason that you're being abused. And not being perfect is not the reason that the relationship was destroyed. The relationship was destroyed because somebody was abusive. And yeah, there are relationships where both people are abusive, but there's also relationships where only one person is abusive. And when one person is abusing the other person and the relationship falls apart, the relationship fell apart because one person was abusive. And that's just all there is to it. And if abusive people can't take responsibility for that, that's not your problem anymore, is it? I hope you found this helpful. If you like this material, please like or comment or subscribe. It really helps build my channel so that I can keep making these kind of videos for you. Thanks, until next time, bye.